Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How are you hanging today, Jay? Doing all right, man. Coming to you live from Los Angeles, and you're coming from? Live from southern Minnesota. <laughs> wow. How's the weather out although, there? Although I'm faking it with my virtual oh, background of my office. I didn't mean to call you out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for all you know, I'm sitting on the toilet. I mean, you can't tell, right? Oh, no, that's going to fester. Okay. <laughs> oh, online is just beautiful the way you can fake everything. It's it, the deep it fake. Really it really is. It really is. I actually had a Zoom call yesterday with somebody who, to get away from her family, she did go into the bathroom. And at, during the middle of the Zoom call with other people, her husband comes into the bathroom while she's on the call. You know, modern uh, modern world. Oh, I, I I've seen people who have gone into their walk-in closets. Mm -hmm. I'll go sit on a bed. You know, <laughs> I sit outside on patio furniture. Yeah. You know, honestly, I can tell you the greatest enhancement to Skype and Zoom are these virtual backgrounds. Because yeah. that was always my biggest fear. It's like it doesn't look cool to be sitting there with a stack of dirty laundry behind you. No, or people coming, you know, walking behind you, yeah. you know, scratching so, their so, butt. So, so now you throw up a virtual background <laughs> and it can be a, the, your recording studio, your rehearsal room, it, anything that just gives it a little more yeah. professional look. Their technology is pretty darn good. I mean, it's not perfect, but if you hold relatively still, and, yeah, and it, and even if you have a busy background, it'll it'll do a really good job. Just yeah, I mean, yeah. Keep in cats, mind this this kudos. this is I don't have any sort of green screen, blue screen behind mm -hmm. me. It's you know, there's a table behind me and a bookshelf behind me and a desk behind me know. and different colors and different textures and depths. Yeah, yeah. No, they they do they do fabulous. I mean, anybody out there, if you're doing all of this stuff online invest some time, get some virtual backgrounds. Yeah. I've got one that says I've gone to get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a lot of fun. And look, if you're an artist, use your band logo, you know, yes. use, use it as use a promotion. Picture of a crowd, whatever. Yeah. If you're going to do a podcast interview with somebody and you're doing it via Skype or Zoom, Put your album cover behind you as the virtual right. background, and it's an advertisement for the whole interview. Yeah, and I've got one for you. I had one of my artists create backdrops with their uh, band logo and with their album art. It's something you can give away to your fans. You give to your that, fans. Yeah. Just, just, fun. Just, just like desktop images that you would give to your fans. That's right. Yeah, no, these virtual backgrounds are very cool, and don't, don't ignore them. Skype and Zoom both support them and you know like like my image back there is literally i went to my office a couple months ago stood looking at the wall and just took a photo of the wall that's it yeah and i actually got one that's a background of what i see in front of me at my office so it's my computer <laughs> and stuff like that so i could actually be sitting in front of a computer if i wanted to i mean that's you awesome. can you can do amazing stuff with it so yeah that's a fun little fun little tip um, yeah, for you to 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 deal with Zoom and Skype. Yeah. Um, I don't have the specs in front of me, but you can just Google it. You know what the specs are for that image, and then you just create that image to that size. You're good to go. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably the same size or close to the same size as a YouTube thumbnail. Probably, which is what nineteen twenty by something. I don't remember. Just you can Google it. I mean, yeah. and frankly, you can actually put any image you want in, and it just kind of scales and fits. That's it right. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. There you go. Um, is ideal, but you can also do a movie file. That's right. Uh, I I did remember they people. have the the palm trees and yep. the ocean. So, um, play around with it. Yep. So, um, cool. before we get into this week's discussion, just a real quick shout out to everybody over at Hypebot and Bands in Town. Thank you so much for everything you do to continue you, to spread the word and support the Music Biz Weekly podcast. And of course, huge shout out to our sponsor, DiscMakers.com. 
We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments are so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, T-shirts, online, and at gigs, they're starting to creep back, has become an important income yeah. generator. For every CD you sell, you'd need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. That's a lot of streams. That's a lot of marketing. Sure that's a lot of promotion. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even T-shirts. So we put together a cool little offer for you with the fine folks over at Disc Makers. Head over to DiscMakers.com. Place an order for a hundred or more CDs. And when you check out, use the code FREEBIZ, F-R-E-E-B-I-Z, and you'll save up to $150 in shipping costs. So write that code down, FREEBIZ, and save up to $150 on shipping of a hundred or more CDs from discmakers.com. Awesome. So, we're uh, flying by the seat of our pants. It's another one of those. Those where, are always the best anyway. Yeah, you I, know. I kind of look forward to it when a guest can't make it and they, we re reschedule because then the show must go on and we just talk about whatever's on our mind. And, then, you know, and, like you know, and, and, and let's be honest, when, when I first started this when was years that? ago, 20, How many years? 20, 20, 20, 2011. So it'll be 10 years next spring. Wow. That that's this podcast awesome. has been. That's all this was, was with, with the original co-host, Brian, we would just sit down and talk. We really didn't start out with guests. It's now become very guest focused, which is yeah. great, but it was always us just riffing. And um, yeah, I miss that every once in a while. Every once in a while, it's like when we've had two weeks of two, two weeks, two months of like solid guests. I'm like, ah, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I want to say something that's not guest related. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I like it. And I don't know if you remember how, you, I mean, I've been doing this with you for over five years. So yeah. it, it's crazy how fast that's gone by. But I remember I was sitting at Bob's big boy in Burbank and you and I were just on the phone talking about kiss and I'm sitting there drinking my coffee and we're just talking. And I think we probably talked for like an hour. And then I came on as a guest and then a little while later came on as a guest. And pretty soon you're like, yeah, you know, my, my old co-host left, you know, would you like to, you know, start doing these things? And the thing about podcasts is if you're going to do it, do it right? You got to do it every week. Mm -hmm. And there are times where you go solo. There are times when I go solo, you know, and it's, we've done a pretty good job over the last five, six years of, there might, there might be one or two, two, two not many. Two, yeah. A couple, couple a year that we miss for whatever reason that work nails us. It's a holiday family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I completely agree. When I started this podcast, it was like, you know, the old analogy of you'd sit down and, and every Tuesday night you'd turn on TV and you knew what your shows were going to be because they right. were there every right. week, week in That's and right. week out. Yeah. And I think a podcast needs to be the same way. I agree. Um, you've got to have the expectation that as a listener, you know, you're going to be able to tune in on this day and always have a new episode. We should do one of those year end things that all these people do where you have like Howard Stern or whatever, where you have like these clips from all your best guests. Cause I've we've always, had some amazing I've guests. I've always wanted to do that, but here, here someone's got to edit it. Yeah. I was going to say, here's the honest truth. People I'm too fucking lazy to sit there and go back and listen through 50 plus episodes and mark what I want to cut out and cut it out yeah. and edit. Yeah. Well, I love that stuff, 
Bruce asks us sometimes at the end of the year, like, what were your favorite yeah. you know, shows of the year? But I was just looking back because I was searching for something that I needed to find in one of our podcasts. And I was like, you know, we've had like Seth Godin on and we've had attorneys and really, you know, popular musicians. And we've had some pretty amazing guests on the, on the program. It's, it's when you yep. look at it over history, there's a lot of fun stuff yep. there. Yep. Um, so today we are flying. We're flying by the seat of our pants. This is going to be, uh, let's just riff. Um, what I wanted to do a quick mention of, um, we're not going to get into the rights, the wrongs, the politics of it, but more shows are starting to happen. Not, yeah. not full-blown tours, but I'm starting to see bands that are doing the one-off show at this bar, at this this country in. county event whatever it is whatever um so they're starting to come back if you're in a band and you're starting to do these shows my advice is you better start beating your fans over the head to tell them to remind them you're back doing live shows because for months now everybody is living not, under not the, under the, the assumption of that there's no shows Nobody's yeah. touring. I'm not going to bother going to check tour dates. I'm not paying attention to that right now because it's not happening. And, and you're still contending with the fact that major artists and major tours are not touring. So there's still a lot of people. I was just talking to somebody yesterday. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm still sitting on Rolling Stones tickets. I wish they'd either cancel or reschedule, you know. So if you've got a show, Get out on bands in town and start messaging your trackers. And I'm not talking about one message. You might want to come up with a message every week to remind them that you're coming back, that you're coming back. Don't forget, you can message the people who specifically RSVP'd to a show on bands in town. Remind them again so they don't forget. For free, yeah. Yeah, it's all for free. So... Um, this is a great time to use bands in town trackers. This is an ideal time to use that email list. You've all got email lists, right? That's right. right. You better <laughs> get that email list up and send out an email blast saying we're back and here's the shows and give them ticket links and, and make it as simple as possible because you need these people coming to your shows now. Yeah. And look, it's going to be a gradual thing. You know, we we had people on the show talking about these kind of neighborhood concerts, you know, where they roll up. Um, there are these socially distanced things at drive-in theaters. And this this is gradually coming back now. And that's a really good point. Um, people aren't in the mindset that there's going to be some kind of a show coming up. So you need to make them know uh, if you are. Yep, yep. So, yeah. You don't forget to beat your fans over the head. And this is one of the few times we're going to say, <laughs> remind them, remind them, remind them, because yeah. it has been out of mind for That's months, right. yeah. months and months. Long time. Um, so, Jay, you kind of came up with a, a little topic to chat about. Yeah, it's something that's been on our minds for the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's something you and I deal with over time. We've always dealt with it. But right now, it just seems like there's a lot of folks who are asking the same questions, and, and that surrounds how do you go from zero to 60? And what I mean by that is we all know how to kind of re-engage your fan base when you have a new release. There's some strategies and tactics around that. They're the same for when you're trying to grow your audience. But what about when you don't have any audience? What if you are literally starting from zero? And there are, you know, again, I've had some of these conversations in the last week or two from folks saying, look, I, I hear what you're saying about, you know, this, this advertising campaign or driving traffic to DSPs. I don't have any music up on DSPs yet. I don't have any social footprint yet. And it, it got me to kind of thinking, well, yeah, there's a whole lot of people who are in that boat. And there are a lot of things that you can do to plan and then kind of execute and grow your audience 
And there are ways that you can maybe grab a little bit of somebody else's audience. There's a, there's a way that you can kind of use your family and friends as your street team. There's a lot of tactics. So I thought maybe you and I could kind of bounce around a few ideas that we, we use to kind of go from zero to 60. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's a topic I've, I've talked about, I know multiple times over the years of this show, um, you and I have both encountered artists where they, they reach out to us and they're like, yeah, you know, we just spent tens of thousands of dollars in this great studio. We got a great engineer. We hired a good mixer, whatever it might be. The album sounds fabulous and we're releasing it next month. Right. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your marketing budget? What kind of money have you set aside to market and promote this is question number one. Question number two is, how big is your fan base? And, and that's a question every artist should be able to answer at any moment if somebody asks them. How big is your fan base? Oh, yeah. it's roughly this much on Facebook, this much on Instagram, this much on Bands in Town, email list is this, website gets this much traffic. You should know that by heart. Yeah. Um, and usually the answer to those two questions are something along the lines of, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what my marketing budget is. That's why I'm talking to you. And we have no fans. As you said, I mean, and literally no fans because they're a brand new band. They've only been around a year and they've done three shows or, you know, They've got 10 fans, which is essentially no fans. Right. Um, and that's when I sit back and go, you know, okay, we should be talking about this six months ago, not 30 days before. Yeah, you're not going to build a fan base dropping. in 30 days. Because to your point of how to go from zero to 60, you need to build a fan base first thing you have to do this is and this is really important for artists who have no fans if you've got a fan base there's nothing wrong with continually building it but if you have zero fans following you zero facebook zero twitter you don't even have an instagram account yet you've right. got to start building that as soon as possible not 30 days out because it will take time to build those numbers up because yeah. as I always tell people, you need to have an audience to talk to. Right. When you right. say I've got a new album, who are you telling it to? Yeah. An echo chamber of nothing or are you yeah. telling it to thousands of fans? You've got to build that fan base up. So yeah. that's the first thing you need to do. Like the day you sit down and form your band, somebody should be in charge of getting fans. It should, it should start that early. Yeah, in your you career. should have a plan. Um, but then when it comes to that budget, the marketing budget, it's also, you know, somebody sits down and, and asks you that question. You could sit here and go, well, I don't you know. Your marketing budget could be 5,000, could be 50,000, could be a hundred thousand. Yeah. I can deal with, any sort of budget, you just get more or less depending on how much money you have. You know, the, the results will be indicative of how much you spend. Yeah. And don't ask me what your budget should be. You kind of, kind of come to us and say, well, you know, we've set aside $10,000. How should we use that $10,000? Yeah. yeah. Do I need a publicist right, right away? You know, there, we can help with those types of expenses and show you what makes sense and what doesn't. And when it but, makes sense. Yeah. And, and I was talking to this artist this week who's literally starting from zero and there wasn't much of a budget. Um, there was enough for a publicist, which is, which is great. Not going to sink money into radio at this point. But one of the things that we talked about um, was collaboration. And it's, it's worked so well. And what I mean by that is there, if you're a new developing artist, do you know any other local artists that have a little bit of a following? 
that you could do either perform a song together, you could write a song, you could do a live stream together where you could kind of play to their crowd so you can gain new fans. It's, it's as old as the music industry, right? The, the reason I discovered Cheap Trick is I went to see Kiss play and they were the opening band. Um, the rap community has been all about this for a long time. If there's a popular uh, hip hop artist, that person will bring in one of their protégés and then they start getting a following and then they bring in somebody. So collaboration can be very effective and doesn't have to cost any money. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, what, what are, what are, what are, what are some tips, tricks? Cause let, let's also keep in mind, if you're a brand new band, you may have little to no budget. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it it's, it's rare that a brand new band has a deep pocketed investor who's going to yeah. finance something to the tunes of tens of thousands of dollars. That's right. So, so what are some tips to get you from zero to get you away from zero and start approaching 60? Cause let's, right. let's be honest. you to go from zero to 60 in a short period of time is going to take money. That's yeah. there's no way around it. The shorter your window, the more money you're going to need to spend to do it. The bigger that window is, that lead time, the more you can do organically. And organically means free. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of tactics you can use, and we'll talk about a few of these, that you can do for free. Now, are there people who drop something on SoundCloud and immediately millions of plays and they're picked up by a big producer? Yeah, but it's like one in a billion. So yes, there are those rare stories and I certainly wouldn't discourage you from putting music out there and, and testing it and seeing what people, you know, what kind of feedback you get, th those types of things. But a couple of things that I want to throw out, one that's worked for a friend of mine is advocacy, meaning do you believe in a cause? And whatever that clause is, helping animals or, you know, um, cancer treatment for kids, wh whatever it is, there's, maybe there's some cause that you're really passionate about. You can partner with some of those causes um, and provide music for them and provide outreach. And that can sometimes get you in their, on their website in their advertisements, you know, those types of things. So one of the first things, you know, that doesn't cost a lot of money that you're kind of volunteering your time with is are, are there any kind of partnerships, especially like um, some kind of advocacy or cause that you can partner with? Exactly. Um, we've said this many times, but, you know, I will stress it again. Make sure it's a legitimate cause that you believe in. Yeah. It can't be fake. Can't be don't, fake. Don't just do it because they have a big now, following. All also keep in mind those causes want to see what you can do in return. Now you're not going to be able to bring much in the form of not eyeballs initially. to the table. Right. Yeah. So and that that's not going to uh, that's not going to prevent this from happening, but it means you can't be as demanding. So if you're reaching out to a cause and say, we'd like to do something with you, but we don't have an audience and they might say, well, okay, but you know, we're only going to be able to do this little bit to have your band involved with us. You can't sit there and make the demands of, Oh no, 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 no. You need to email all your 5 million followers and you need to make us the headliner on your fundraiser show you know, it might be, can you get us the opening gig at noon on your fundraising show? Yeah, it's not the ideal time slot, but you got to remember it's got to start somewhere. It's, it's how much you can each scratch each other's back. You know, these yeah. causes want to know what they can get to help further their cause as well. Yeah. As you get bigger, as in an audience, you can now reach out and say, 
well, I've got 10,000 people on my email list that I'll be happy to email your whatever to. Oh, we've got 50,000 people on Facebook. We'll put a post up. for. Now you've got a little more that you can go back and say, we'll do this. Will you do more? Right. You're starting to build that story. And I think so, that's so manage your so expectations. Important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another area where I see artists having success and sometimes it's even um, accidental. It's not deliberate um, where they will, you know, as they're starting out, they'll record a cover tune of some band that was influential to them or that they feel like, they could tour with in a non-COVID world or that they would like to collaborate with. And then they tag them in these cover versions that they do. And uh, I mean, recently I saw this, um, this really cool version of this artist named um, Mariah Formica and she was covering Heart. And she had that voice. I mean, this, this, she's probably 20 years old and she sounded like Ann Wilson, but she also played guitar and played it well. And she had another drummer. Like if you look up Barracuda and, uh, and uh, Mariah Formica, that's the kind of thing they're getting tons of attention now because of that video. And she's not a client, you know, this isn't about that. It's just that sort of thing. If it's done with integrity and like, you know, we were talking about before, you, you know, even with causes, it's got to be genuine. So if it really is an artist that you, you know, grew up on or that, you know, uh, that you're passionate about, you know, that's one way because then when people search for that artist or that song, your your song at some point could come up in the search or somebody that sees you when you start your socials and you post that or your YouTube channel and you post that, they may send it, hey, Michael, I know you like this band. Check out this cover version that this kid's doing. This is amazing. Sometimes that can kind of, you know, it's not going to make or break your career, but every single one of these bricks in the wall help. Exactly. Um, what I would also remind once again don't get caught up in thinking somebody's going to be able to quickly get you from zero to 60 with a purchase of fans followers followers fans playlists. likes streams whatever the metric is on the social network that you're interested in don't pay for it man. don't don't go down that road it is not there is tears. there is no i can guarantee you there is no magic bullet to get no you from zero to 10,000 fans by Monday morning. Does Plus not it's happen. different for every artist too. Um, something that works for, you know, an EDM or country artist may not work for a hard rock artist. If it was that easy, we'd all do it. And I do have people who ask me, you know, what are the shortcuts? Can I buy my way onto playlists? Can I buy followers and likes? You can do some of those things, but they will hurt you in the end. Um, one little side note, I had an artist who had 13,000 followers on Spotify, but she had used some of these playlist pitching places that aren't so reputable. And on May 1st, May 2nd, Spotify went through and got rid of a Clean lot of house. these bad, yep. yeah, these uh, spin farms and bots and some of those. Anyway, she lost 10,000 followers in one day. And that, and, and that happens not just on Spotify, everyone. That happens on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Instagram. The, I, I don't know the frequency, but it happens with some regularity that they That's all right. just all of a sudden, and you'll see it in the news. Oh, my God. So, you know, so-and-so, Kanye just lost 2 million followers. What's going on? Well, it's because they're cleaning they're out real. fake accounts. And, and I'm – and. This isn't saying that, that that Twitter account went out and purchased them because it's quite possible that fake accounts will sure, follow. it happens. But they're just cleaning house, and that will happen. And as you said, you will see your numbers just – I've seen people where, you know, YouTube subscribers overnight drop by 5,000 because YouTube – did the same thing yeah so don't do that don't don't fall into i uh, let's put it this way any service that's got a menu on a website that says 
1,000 followers, 2,500 followers, 5,000 followers, PayPal link, PayPal. That's completely Run fake. the other it's direction. A it's 100% scam. Trust us on this one. Um, but you should be growing your numbers. So how yeah. can you grow your numbers for zero or very little budget? Yeah. Well, you can organically grow numbers on Twitter and Instagram through work. It does take time. It's basically a lookalike audience. Find an artist that you think your their fans should like you. You go to their Twitter account or their Instagram account. You click the who's following that artist, and you'll get a long list, and you just start following. Don't follow hundreds a day because you'll get marked as a spammer, and you might have your account blocked. 25, maybe 50 a day flies under the radar. And I've done this for clients. You can see about a 10% follow back rate. Hey, it's something. It's something. Again, so we're just talking about incremental. It's incremental. Things. So you follow, you know, 25 a day. After 10 days, you followed 250 people. 25 of those people are going to follow you back. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a little growth. It's a little growth. It's a little growth. That same process works for Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. every Face little bit helps. Fa Facebook, you can't do that. Facebook, you can't go see who is who liked a page and then get that long list and just say, follow yeah. me. Because you're not a person, you're a page on Facebook, if that makes any sense. So you're going to have to spend a little money. Yeah, but, but there's one other thing I want to throw in there, but I'm so glad you brought up lookalike audiences because I had a um, an artist a couple of weeks ago who had really good success. I didn't realize that there was a network out there of folks with their email lists that create lookalike audiences. And so for those that don't know, you can go into Facebook and basically import your mail list. Yes, a it's a custom audience. Yeah, you can create this audience. Now it's got the attributes. It's your fans, right? And if you use that and people are doing this, I can have somebody, I can sign somebody up as, and give them access to it as admin at, at certain levels. Now they're not seeing my unique email addresses. They're just seeing that audience and I can let somebody else use that audience. Now it only makes sense when it's, very similar audiences, very similar genres, very similar bands. And you know that fans of this band would like fans of your band, but you can use that to send a message to those fans and target them when it's, it's something that they will probably like. And, and like I said, I don't know, I haven't used this network, but there are people who sell access to some of these and I don't recommend that. I haven't tried it, but I do know that um, myself and one of our artists actually used their list to help another band out to send a message, a targeted message to. Yeah, you know, the, the, those they're called custom audiences that you can build and there's various custom audiences you can build, but the most common is taking an email list. Now again, it, Either you've got to know somebody who's got a list that's going to grant you access to it, or you've got to have your own. If you're a brand new band, you probably have neither of those at this point in time. Yeah. But it's yeah. good to keep in mind. But on Facebook, and I've been doing this for the last few weeks with a client, you can spend as little as $5 a day. Target that lookalike audience that you want. My band is this. I want the fans of this band to maybe like my page. Set it up, five bucks a day, five days. I've had artists that get 350 new likes in five days for spending 25 bucks. And they will do that week in and week out because yeah. that's, that's affordable. I mean, they 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 were spending they got down to as low as six cents per like. Now this is that's, not buying bulk likes. These are real people on mm -hmm. Facebook that get an ad put in front of them that they have to take action and click a button to like you. So it's not a bot, it's not a 
it, it's not a fake account. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be a super engaged fan because that's a whole nother next level. No, but All you're trying to do right now at that zero miles per hour mark is find people to start turning into fans. Yeah. Same as the same goes for these Twitter and Instagram people you're following. They're not instantly your fans. They've no, just followed engaged. you. They followed you back because there's something about you that at least interests them. Yeah. You've still got to engage with them. You've still got to pull them in and get them hooked on you. Yeah. These Facebook likes are the same way, but the point is if you can do 350 likes a week and you spend $25 a week and you spend $100 a month, you just start doing the math and you can see how quickly you can get up to a few thousand likes right, right away. Right. Now that, and that, so that's how you've got to do it on Facebook. Um, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money on Facebook. You're yeah. just going to. Now, there, there are things you can do organically, but they, they take a lot longer. I mean, you should uh, immediately be seeking out Facebook groups and other pages that would be your audience, and you need to join them. You need to like those pages. You need to start getting engaged with those pages. Yep. Get engaged with the admin of the page, the admin of the group, because there's, you know, one of the things everybody's always thought about is, well, I'm going to make a, a premiere, going to make a big announcement. You know, you always want to go after the big website to share your announcement or your premiere of a video right. or the first song. Um, it doesn't always have to be a website, people. There's some Facebook groups that are just monstrous in size and yeah, extremely and active. To your genre, to your, Re yeah. Get, get to know the admin of that, pay, that group and offer that Facebook group the premiere, the first song, the first yeah. whatever. That's another avenue that you can pursue to start right. building this up. Now, yeah. while all this is happening, you have to have a website. You have to have an email list. You have to have a finished Facebook page, a finished Twitter account, a finished Instagram account, a finished YouTube channel. Not completely empty because as you're pulling these fans in, they're going to go look at your world. If your world is empty, why? Wow, what's exciting about this, this artist? Right. There's not a single planning, right? There's not a single video. That. They still have a generic profile image. Yeah. Uh-uh. Do not start pulling audiences in from anywhere until you've at least skinned everything and made it look good and put a few pieces of initial content up right away. That's so right. They don't land in a completely deserted profile. Right. And you touched on this a little bit earlier. You don't just drop something something in the marketplace in a month. You plan this out. You want to make sure that you are already locked and loaded and set up. You know, you're talking about socials. Make sure that your branding and imagery across all your socials is consistent. So if somebody sees you on Twitter or YouTube or Instagram, it's the same thing. They get a sense of your brand and your imaging with all of that. But these things are easy to kind of plan and set up uh, in advance. Um, we had a, a guest on the podcast a couple of weeks ago from Tone Den and some of these playbooks that they have to reach people. Let's say you want to increase Spotify followers or you want to increase YouTube um, subscribers. They have little playbooks for that. And to your point, it doesn't have to be expensive. It starts at $5 a day, but you're going to have to invest in yourself at some point. Now, some of these things are free and you can start doing some of these things right away. But if you're serious about your craft, you're going to have to, at some point, invest some money into it. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody said, what kind of budget do I need to just get started? Well, you might need the budget for hiring somebody to help or do this for you. but then. You know, at, at, for an ad budget, I would sit here and say, if you can come up with 100 to $200 a month for advertising, that will at least get you off of the zero mark and start moving you. 
And as you see the results, it becomes much easier for me to go back to a client and say, well, you know, we spent six cents per like here and this worked great at $5 a day. What if we double it? Good Lord, we go to $10 a day instead of, you know, instead of $25 a week, we're spending 50 bucks a week. But guess what? You're going to get close to a thousand new likes every week. It's a much easier sell once you've got some of the little results to see how it performs. Right. So that's what I would say for a budget. If you know, and again, it might, you might be strapping, you know, you might be digging deep into the, the cushions of the couch to find this money, but you're going to have to find some money. Right. You can't do all of this for free. And this goes all the way back, Jay, is kind of a good way to wrap this, this whole discussion up here. When you're sitting here going, well, we're going to go into the studio and we're going to spend $20,000 in the studio to record this album. Maybe you need to sit down and go, well, can we do it for 12000 instead of 20000 and take the extra 8000 and put it into marketing? Right. Right. And do we need a full album? Maybe we do an EP first and save a little bit of money and put more into actually growing or, or, our audience. Or, or, or what, what I talk to a lot of artists these days is, yeah, you're going to record a full album, but you don't need to release it as a full album. You can release it as two EPs. So now yeah. you've got enough material to keep you active for the next 12 to 18 months because you got two EPs that you can release that are done, recorded, ready to go. But the point is, if your band saved up and all the money they scraped together was $20,000 and then you went and spent it all in the studio, you're going to be having a tough battle to find some more money to do it right because and 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 I have a, a a good friend who did this. They spent that kind of money, and then they had no money to do any marketing whatsoever. Yeah, and guess what? It. This great album was just never heard, never yeah. heard, because yeah, they, they didn't have that. they didn't have an audience. They couldn't spend the money. They didn't have the money. It's sad. Yeah, they say that there's two reasons why someone is not listening to your new music. Either A, um, they aren't aware of the band, you know, they've never been exposed to it. Well, marketing can help that. And then number two, they like the band or they've been exposed to the band, but they just didn't know it was out. Yeah. And those are two problems that you can solve. Yeah, though you, you can completely control that because, you know, at the end of the day, we could all sit here and whatever genre of music we like, rattle off bands that are not that great, but are getting all the attention. And then we sit back and go, but this was such a fantastic album. It should have been. Right. It was one of those should have been releases. Yep. yep. They're out, they've been out there for the life of the music industry, and they will always be out there. Mm -hmm. music alone will not nope. it's sell a business man album. you gotta you gotta put put effort and marketing into your business to grow your audience so so i mean my, my my one takeaway from this whole discussion is start thinking about building that fan base as soon as possible put together a plan before you're in the studio yep as you're talking amongst the band members of let's go in the studio. That's when you should start planning to find your audience Yeah, that far in advance. A year in advance would be great. Could you imagine spending a year building up your audience and then announce an album and you've announced it to 10,000 people? That's yeah. great. Yeah. I get it. People get impatient, especially when you record music. It's like a baby. You know, you just want it to come out. You, you, I get that. I've worked with a lot of artists and they just, you know, they just want to move on and, and go on to the next thing. But you can go so much further if you just put a pen to paper and do some basic planning uh, early. That's when good things happen. And, and there will be, you will have much much less dis 
disappointment in the band amongst the band members and the team that's working it. Um, if you plan this out in advance, yeah. if you don't plan it out, I've you've probably seen it too. There's always that disappointment of God. I just don't get it. Yeah. Why didn't it work? What didn't? What did we do wrong? Was it the wrong single? Was it the wrong video? No, you just didn't plan this out yeah. early no one enough. Knew. No Nobody one knew. Like, knew. Like tonight at midnight, I think I think it's tonight. Uh, Taylor Swift is dropping an album. Well, she can do that because she's got millions of fans and she doesn't need any setup. It's like Beyonce. Boom, yep. there it is. But there's like five artists that can do yeah, that. Ex exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you're and if you're at the zero mark, you're not one of those artists. It's about They're the only person yet. who's expecting your album might be your boyfriend or girlfriend. That's yeah. it. Maybe and your mom. parents and your mom. <laughs> Great. Is that going to yeah. that going to make it a great album? <clears throat> no. No, you want a great album to be recognized by people you don't even know. That's where you That's go right. find your fans. So start yep. today. Start finding that audience today. All right, Jay. So um real quick, once again, thank you to Hypebot and Bands in Town and Disc Makers for everything you do to support us. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that red Pound subscribe. It. Pound that red subscribe <laughs> button. Hit the bell so you're notified. Uh, Spotify, uh, hit that follow button. And iTunes, subscribe and leave us a review and a rating. Please. And uh, that's it. Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We're out of here till next week. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value.